Hello and welcome. My name is Adam Velengawa and today we are going to review HRT3 from Heidelberg Engineering. This is an in vivo corneal confocal microscope that allows us to see the microstructure of the cornea. It is the last of its kind and I've heard that unfortunately it's not going to be produced any longer. So this review is a little bit of a tribute to this wonderful machine that enhanced our understanding of the cornea in its pathology and physiology. Please watch with me the review of the HRT3 from Heidelberg Engineering. All right, so this is our old HRT3. It's super old, it's almost as old as I am and it was one of the first on the market. And this is half months old and this is the new one. It's one of the last produced HRT3 and it looks very same like the old one, right? It's made of high quality metal body. It will probably survive uh, anatomic bomb. It's easy to clean and you have the external fixator, which is quite useful. In front, we have the cables and the manual positioning of the tune rest. This black box is the external camera. It's very useful for making sure where you have the eye. And this central white part is the lens. It has to be immersed in water, so we usually use some gel. And then you put a sterile cap on it and then you put some gel on the cap to prevent erosions. This is how you manually adjust focus, right? This is how you move back and front, and this is how you move right to left, and this is how you move up and down. And there is also a faster way to move right to left if you need to change the eye scanned, and you basically do it by clicking on this black uh, button, and then, naturally, if you do it fast, you also need to change the positioning of this external camera, like this. This is the way to take images uh, by clicking on the button, but there is also easier and more comfortable way to do this by using foot switch, and which is highly useful because you need both hands to operate the machine, as you can imagine. Although HRT3 is small, it takes some space, this whole setup with the computer and the keyboard and the machines. For people familiar with the other instruments from Heidelberg, no surprise, there is the very same software you'll find on other instruments. This is the Hex software. And I always upload the companies and say good words for the companies for using one software across multiple platforms because it's much easier for people to use other instruments. This is basically a, a quite friendly and easy to use software. Um, you can add new patients, you can search for patients based on the date of birth, the date of the exam, type of modality, and so on. Um, and then if you have a very wide search, you will see all the names. Um, this is what you see. So you see the date of the exam and then the laterality, right, with small uh, images, which is quite useful because uh, if you have plenty of images, you don't need to scroll scroll through 100 or several hundred of uh, images, you just click on, you firstly search for the one that interests you and then you can, you can double click and see the enlarged. If you took other approach and took the movies, you'll also see uh, the, the uh, movies, right? So this is a second way to do it. And if you would like to examine the patient, this is what you are going to see. So on the top, you have the laterality, then you have the image quality index, 100 is the best one. And then you have the focus, right? The depth of the cornea in micrometers. It's very important to always reset to be zero when it's the epithelium, because then you can determine the thickness of a lesion or of the infiltrate. There are three ways to capture image. So one way is the still image. It's basically like a screenshot of what you saw. The second way is the sequence. So it's a movie. And the third one is the volume scan. So basically machine automatically adjusts the volume. Then you can also adjust the zoom from the external camera. Let's start with the still images. On the left side, you have the confocal image of the cornea, and then you have the focus position. And on the right side, you have image from the external camera, right? So this is the only way to determine where you were on the cornea while taking a photo. And it's very important to have a clear and sharp image of the eye. A second type of taking images are the movie. So these are subsequent frames that were taken um, over 100 frames, for instance. And then uh, this is basically a movie. It's very useful. I use it quite often because uh, then you don't miss any important information. And last, we have the 
volumetric scans. So the machine automatically adjusts the focus. Most useful if you have some corneal erosions or ulcer. There's also a way to calculate cellular density and I can imagine this is used mostly for endothelial cells. Uh, it's not as nice as let's say specular microscope because the focus here is much shorter than in a specular microscope. So you see those type of uh, waves of the endothelial cells. Nevertheless, I can imagine that if somebody is doing some research on a specific part of the cornea that they want to image and calculate the density of the cells, then this machine will be a machine of choice. That was the presentation. I think the corneal confocal in vivo microscopy was the single most important imaging of the cornea, except for the, let's say, slit lamp, because it provides us with so many information on the dystrophies, on the infectious diseases, on how do the endothelial cells behave during Fuchs endothelial cell dystrophy. And I think there is no doubt that this, this machine will last for a couple of years and will still be in use. I think the biggest threat to confocal microscopy comes from OCT because with the current uh, resolution of the best machines, you can really stop using confocal microscopy in many corneal dystrophies because even with Miesmann dystrophy, you can still see the tiny little cysts on the OCT. So you don't need to do the confocal. But before that, this was the only way to see the cellular level. So on the other side, this is amazing that we are the only speciality, maybe except for dermatology, that's able to see erythrocytes in vessels flowing in vivo or cells or fungi. It's wonderful. It was also non-invasive, right? So if you have a patient who's coming to you with some corneal infection, before you get any results from the microbiology, you could do confocal and have the diagnosis right away. It provided some objective measurement, uh, for instance, about the corneal nerves. Although I think this was one of the biggest disappointment because at the beginning when people started calculating nerves and they saw that there are some differences between healthy and let's say people with neurological diseases, they thought, well, we'll be able to um, diagnose Alzheimer or Parkinson's disease based on the cornea confocal nerves but actually it turned out not to be as useful as previously thought. Partially because uh, this machine doesn't have the way to objectively measure the corneal nerves. Such measurement tool is used on ConforScan from NIDAC, which is also not longer produced, but ConforScan wasn't as good as this one when it comes to resolution. So it was pretty difficult to get nice image of the corneal nerves. So what were the downsides? Well, I would start by saying that the software wasn't really upgraded, right? So it, it would be nice to have like a caliber option. You don't have this, right? In order to calculate the correct size of, of a lesion, you need to export this to ImageJ or Photoshop, and then you can use the scale bar that's, that's located on the image, and then you can, you can actually calculate the, the size. Another problem is the cost of operation, because you need the sterile caps. Uh, each one costs a couple of euros, so if you want to be nice to a patient, you need to use both. That's also quite expensive. What else? Um, the problem is that you don't really see where you are. Like you cannot pinpoint accurately the area on the cornea. So you have this, this side camera. So more or less you can say where you are, but without, you know, just being able to 100% say, oh, this is where we are. Your guess, right? Rather than an accurate description. Moreover, you know, it's it's quite uncomfortable for a patient. This is a contact method. You need to flatten the cornea, especially for patients who have photophobia, like amoeba patients or herpetic patients. It was sometimes really challenging to image them. I usually try not to use speculum. I know some other doctors who use always speculum uh, for this method. Another issue is the sound that this machine produces. It's like the spectralis sound. But naturally, it's not as often used as OCT. At the beginning, I showed you how to operate this machine with all these knobs and buttons. You can imagine it's not so easy. But I found once when I was in the United States that people are using this 
controller. Uh, it's made in Germany and it allows you to basically operate the machine without stretching your arms. And so it's, it's very useful and it's faster and it's more ergonomically friendly. So if you have money to spend, I, I can only recommend this addition. And last but not least, I would say that this is the most difficult imaging modality, let's, except for MRI and, and CT, that we have in ophthalmology. Because uh, even though I've been using this method for almost 10 years, uh, I still have many doubts and I still send the images uh, for, for a second opinion. I still ask uh, other uh, more experienced user, uh, is this amoeba, is this a fungi? Uh, because we don't also have many resources. So there is one book by Professor Guthoff, who is the inventor of this Rostock module. But you can compare it to hundreds of uh, retina OCT atlases that are out there. The same applies to papers, right? Papers on confocal are a niche uh, compared to, let's say, retina or cornea OCTs. Uh, and the same applies to conferences, right? I, I remember one conference in which people showed something that they claimed was a fungi. In my opinion, this was the just the fibrosis of the stroma. So uh, you, you have to be really careful. More or less, it will be up to you to learn this technique. You learn on your mistakes. The learning curve is relatively uh, flat, right? It takes a long time to, to be able to get nice images. And then it takes even longer to be able to diagnose patients properly. Nevertheless, I think this is for people who want to be good cornea specialists. This is an indispensable tool in, in cornea. And it will still be like this for few more years, or depending on how fast the OCT uh, will improve its quality. Thank you very much for watching my review. I hope you've enjoyed. Please subscribe to my channel and goodbye.